I got in my recent order from Train World this week and I purchased one of these Bachman Center Capola cabooses they recently came out with. These were about a year late. Uh, same can be said for the new big haulers they're coming out with as well. But I saw Train World had these for the cheapest price and I went ahead and snatched up one for my collection and I figured go ahead and do a review on it. Um, I was hoping to have the review out on this 260 here first, but I ran into a couple issues with this model and I'm currently waiting for parts from Bachman. But anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and get this model out of the box and take a look at it. One thing I wanted to mention is that along with the center Capola caboose, I also picked up one of these 120.3 frameless tank cars and uh, Train World also threw in some advertising, which we'll probably look at later. But I'm not going to be showing this tank car or looking at this tank car in this video because I've already done a separate review on one of these, the only difference being the paint scheme. But I will leave a link to that review if you want to check it out. Uh, something I do notice with this is there is quite a bit of dust on this box. I'm kind of wondering how long it was sitting at Train World for because I know Bachman discontinued these a while back. But I mean, hey, at 70 bucks, that's a steal. Looking at the model here, I noticed that on this end, for some reason, the railings, ladder, and even the brake wheel are bent inwards for whatever reason. But in addition to that, uh, this grab handle here apparently wasn't installed correctly. And these ones on the side appear to be loose. I don't know if that's uh, just common with these. But I also noticed on this end that the ladder was installed incorrectly and after sitting there it has taken on that bent shape. Now I think I can fix these parts by just pulling them off the model and running them under some hot water and bending them back to shape. But you know so much for quality control. Okay so I straightened out the railings the best I could. And I'm a little confused right now because I didn't get any paperwork with this model. Normally, Blockman includes like a warranty card, a couple sheets in regards to warranty information, and also an exploded diagram of the model in case you need to take something apart or order replacement parts for the unit. But uh, this model didn't come with any. And like I said, I'm a little confused as to why, but I don't know, maybe they don't include the paperwork with this model. But anyways, uh, there was a bag of parts in the box. Uh, these are just hook and loop couplers in case you want to swap out the knuckles that are on the unit. I don't use these particular couplers, so I'm just going to toss those aside. But the model itself, I got to say, I, I do like this. It's got a bit of weight to it. Uh, metal wheels. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good things about this. I'm going to move the camera so we can get a better look here. Like I said, this model's got a bit of weight to it, and I like the fact that it has metal wheels because just from my experience, uh, the plastic ones seem to hold the dirt and move it around more. I don't think you have as much a problem with the metal wheels doing that. But you can see we got uh, railings, ladders, and such. Uh, I did try to straighten these out. They seem to have uh, just gone back to the way they were or whatever. What's up with that? Uh, the unit comes with knuckle couplers factory installed. Uh, you saw there was a bag of hook and loop couplers that you could uh, swap out if you wanted to use those. Uh, in all, this model's kind of basic, but it, it seems to work. This is the Pennsylvania version. They also have a Denver and Rio Grande version and just a unlettered brown or red version, I think. But, uh, what else do we have here? I uh, got the chimney. Like I said, it's kind of a basic model. There's, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of detail on it, but there's enough to make it uh, stand out. And just looking at it here, I think we got interior detail on this model as well. Uh, that'll be something we'll have to check out here. Uh, going underneath, a lot of this detail is just molded on. I mean, keep in mind, we're dealing with uh, the big haulers line here, so it's not going to be the quality that you'd see in like a Spectrum model. But overall, I mean, I don't think it looks too bad, and I'm thinking if there's interior detail, I think the roof should just pop off. 
I'm gonna have to uh, remove the ladders, I think, to get this to come off. Okay, I'm thinking the roof should just lift off. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm not liking what I see. So here's the interior of the model, and it's not overly detailed, it's pretty much basic, like the rest of the model, but it works, I guess. Uh, the only thing bothering me, though, is I'm seeing a lot of super glue residue all over this, and, I mean, thankfully, it doesn't appear to have gotten on the windows or anything, but... As I mentioned before, clearly there is an issue with quality control on this model because this should just not look like that. And the residue may clean off, but in some cases it doesn't. I'm just going to have to try, but in a way I'm kind of thinking I shouldn't have opened up this model. Uh, there's some things I would have been better off not knowing. Well, the good news is the interior cleaned up. All the residue came off of the cushions and the walls. And I was honestly afraid that wouldn't have come off, but thankfully it did. So that's one thing that worked out, I guess. So with the model back together, I wanted to do a hard up comparison of it next to the 120.3 long caboose I have. And keep in mind, you are dealing with something from the Spectrum line here, whereas the center Coppola caboose is from the big haulers line but I think up against the other it holds its own it's got enough detail to make it stand out but it's not over the top either uh, one thing I will say that I like with the spectrum caboose here is that it has interior lighting and that's something I would have liked to have seen on this particular caboose although I'd assume uh, adding lights to it wasn't in the budget for what Bachman wanted the model to be but Overall, like I said, I think it's still a good looking model, even when put up uh, next to this one. So before I give my final thoughts on the model, I wanted to show the catalog, brochure, whatever you want to call it, that Train World sent along with the models. And they actually sent me three of these, so I may take the two extras and uh, send those to a couple other G-Scale modelers I know. But uh, yeah, quite a few offerings here. I can see that uh, Diesel's up for pre-order for the Thompson Friends line. Uh, I don't remember seeing any of these available on the website. Uh, I'm kind of curious whether or not they still have those in stock at all. Uh, they're taking pre-orders on the new 460 steam locomotives from Bachman with the uh, uh, DCC and Sound Ready. Uh, they've got quite a few offerings from like Pico and LGB here. Uh, there's that new Coca-Cola train that Jim Zim was talking about. Uh, more offerings from LGB and Pico. Uh, there's the center Coppola cabooses. Uh, here's uh, passenger stock for the 120.3260s. And there's more offerings on the back here too. They got uh, stuff from MTH. And looks like more stuff from Pico. But, uh, yeah, so that's nice. Uh, they send these along. You get a little idea of uh, what's all available. All right, final thoughts on this model. Well, I'll be honest, the unit kind of surprised me. Although, I would not say in a good way, just because of the few issues it had. I mean, railings were either bent or not installed correctly. The interior had super glue residue on it, and I'm still confused as to why the unit did not come with any paperwork. But hopefully it's just this model that has suffered from those issues, and it's not uh, the whole way across all the models that were released. And, I mean, I don't know. It's definitely what I've seen in this video is not Bachman quality. Although, I don't really think you could pin it on Bachman themselves. It more so goes back to whoever built the model and packaged the model. And, like I said, hopefully it's just this one unit here that's uh, had these issues. But it's kind of unfortunate for me because 
Uh, just recently I bought the 260 there and it arrived damaged because of improper packaging and you know then I find uh, this model here has issues. Uh, dare say I'm cursed. But in all though I would definitely recommend picking up one of these for your indoor or outdoor garden railroad. I think it's well worth getting. Uh, like I said it's not overly detailed but at the same time it's not under detailed either. And uh, I paid $74 for this from Train World, which I thought was a really good price. And although it's a year late, I think these were well worth uh, waiting for. But anyways, that's going to be it for this review. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this model. And uh, see you next time.